Hi, if you are installing a new shower, tub or shower, uh, where an existing one was, there's a good chance that by the time you put your fiberglass insert in, that the uh, sheetrock doesn't drop down onto the flanges uh, like you would, you would hope. That's the case with mine. Over here, where I've already started, the existing sheetrock was... Uh, probably a half inch, the face of this sheetrock a half inch in front of the flange and so this half inch new sheetrock was able to slip right in and I could install it without, uh, with, with, well, install it with these these matching up the planes of those two pieces of sheetrock. However, as I work my way around, the sheetrock flange, or excuse me, the sheetrock gets face of the existing sheetrock gets much closer to the flange. That's probably about a quarter inch. And so I'm going to go from half inch drywall here, and then as the tub flange flares out away from the wall, I'm going to change it down to a quarter inch piece of sheetrock. I've inserted these little shims so that it's closer to a quarter inch more consistently, and I just use some glue it's still drying. I'm going to install shims all along here so I can put this piece of quarter inch up and have it contact both the flange and the stud fairly evenly. Now when you're putting these shims on, the top is, is more than a quarter inch. So what I did is measure one inch down from the top, drew a line, and then cut it right there. It's about one inch down is where it tapers to a quarter inch. And I'm just using a a hacksaw it cuts right through the through the shim. Also, what what may be of help is this. I think it's called a planer, and I've used this to rub along the sheetrock, particular areas like this where the corner was poking up past the face of the existing. I I shaved it down, or even just where I was uneven on my cuts, I could use this and and rub it along, and it shaved down the sheetrock really quickly. Oh, here's the quarter inch, and you can see that by the time I put my shim in the quarter inch down, well, I don't have my tape measure with me, but that's that's right at about half an inch. So it should match up, match up just fine with the the half inch sheetrock here. You'll probably note that I am using some. I'm not using green board everywhere here. I had some left over that I used down at the bottom, where I figure if I get some drips. It will hit the green, uh, green board down here. However, up here I'm into regular drywall. Also, I don't know of any quarter inch that, uh, green board that comes in quarter an inch. However, my shower piece is, uh, I think, 76 inches tall, so it shouldn't get much water uh, up, up here. And I'm also using, here's a sample piece, this piece of L bead. And I'm going to slide it right there. And as I mud, I'll, I'll mud this down. I'm going to staple it first and then mud it down. And then I have my gap there for caulk. So I'll show you another picture or image. As I get to the back side of the shower, the wall is, is very, very bowed. What I've actually done is put the quarter inch right on top of the existing drywall and ran it all the way down. I put some shims in here and, and here. And then as I work my way over here, I stop the quarter inch here and I'm going to feather that out with mud. And then this leg of the quarter inch takes a dive in to my opening and it lines up flush with the, with the existing wall about here. So all that will get feathered in with mud. And then as I come down, I use quarter inch here to line up with the existing half and it's, and it's uh, flush. However, as I get to the bottom, that's where things get pretty challenging. Up to about this point is where the flange of the shower is even with the existing drywall. So my only option here is I'm going to slip a piece of, I don't even know if this is really needed, but a piece of 
half inch. I cut it about seven in seven eighths inch wide, and I'm putting it in between there. And then my tile is going to go right over the top of it. And my tile will stop over the flange. And then I'll put some mud behind here so it gives the tile something to touch as it, as it runs on down. If you're not doing tile, I wouldn't know how you'd really deal with this. But my tile is going to be about six inch wide. So cover most all my mess here.